Focusing on your breath as the air moves in and out of your lungs. Picture yourself in shackles and chains, unable to move. These shackles and chains represent the ideas and thoughts and beliefs that are untrue. Created by you or told to you by someone else. Following each breath, in and out, following and out until it dissolves completely. On your next breath, gather up all those false beliefs, uncertainty, fears, and chaos in your mind. And as you breathe out, allow those false beliefs, the uncertainty, the fear, and the chaos to completely dissolve. As you continue to breathe and focus on your breath, allow any other false or limiting beliefs to surface and dissolve with, out, with each out breath. Releasing all that constricts or holds you back Take one last deep breath with me and allow it all to dissolve. Now imagine you're removing the chains and the shackles and in that moment you realize that the shackles and chains that you thought held you so tightly in place were loose and you could have taken them off at any time. Take a deep breath and release. You are free. You always were. Beautifully done. Are you in the right place? Yes. Are you in the right place? Yes. Are you you're sure? Yes. You're for somewhere else. <laughs> are, you, are you here at the right time? Yes. yes. This is the perfect time. I'd say that you are just where you're supposed to be. Three, four. Right place at the right time. I'm 
there is only one power. One power that is in and through absolutely everything. It is everywhere present. It is seen in nature. It's tasted in the food that we eat. It is felt in the hugs that we get. It is love. It is joy. It is peace. It is fearlessness. And I am one with this amazing essence. It is in and through me, is me, as me. And so I know that whatever is true for me is true for each person here today. I know that this service unfolds with ease and grace. I know that everything is in divine order. I know that the words are perfect. I am so grateful and thankful for this center, this place I call home. I'm grateful and thankful for all the volunteers, the musicians, the, the congregants, and all our reverends. I'm grateful for all of them, <laughs> and we have a lot. <laughs> I'm so grateful for this moment, and so it is. So it is. Quick enough to jump right in there and realize. All right, all right. Yeah. Uh, 
While you're standing, if it's comfortable for you, please stay with us. God bless America and the rest of the world. And just turn to your neighbor and say good morning and welcome. episode that he is coming home today from the hospital and we're just going to keep him in our prayers knowing that hmm, his heart is strong as he is yes. absolutely absolutely okay well anyone here for the first time I see faces I don't recognize but that doesn't mean anything hi how'd you hear about us me you her all right see I wasn't here last week welcome Welcome, welcome. And how, you heard her. What's your name? Uh, Josh. Josh. Is that your family there, Josh? Well, welcome, family. Thank you for being here. Hi. How do you hear about us? The internet. The internet. Okay, we like that. We like that. We love the internet. Anyone else? Oakland. Oakland. All right. You, but you live here now, right? I do. Awesome. Yeah. Did you go to what? What uh, center did you go to in Oakland? All of the above. All of them. All, all three of them. Okay. All right. We hear you. We got it. We got it. Well, thank you so much for being here and coming and celebrating with us today. Oh, we have a lot of people to thank. Thank you, Reverend Wanda, for your talk last week. Thank you, uh, Practitioner Juanita, for continuing with my morning meditation for me. Um, we didn't know. I didn't know. Realize how being in a, a, the East Coast East Time Zone. It was going to affect me, <laughs> and it did affect me. I mean, I was awake at 4.30 this morning thinking this, you know, three hours later than it was. So my body was anyway. Well, it's almost 1 o'clock now, so you should be all good. I should be all good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Reverend Stacy. <laughs> and thank you all, and thank you all the, all the practitioners and volunteers that support it. The, the talk, the everything last week, Beautiful. so that we could not be here, and, and just know that everything was working just as it should. I mean, we didn't call and check on you or anything. <laughs> no, we didn't watch, we didn't, we didn't we watch, just trusted. we trusted. <laughs> we just trusted, which is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Anything you want? I just want to say thank you to those that went to Charleston as well. So oh, yeah. if, you stu if you went to Charleston with us, can you stand up with us? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for supporting CSL. And we talked about that a little bit, about how important it is to, uh, to, to, to support when, you, when and where you can. Okay? Right. So, yeah. Absolutely. So it's a good thing. We had a great time. We'll give you a few of the highlights. It's, um, it's too much it's to too much. even tell you. But I'll give we you can. We'll try to put four days into 25 minutes. <laughs> All right? We will. 
put 40 <laughs> into 25 minutes because then you can go home and, <laughs> and get some rest. <laughs> yes, yes. So thank you for all thank for you. being here. Mm-hmm. Right. I should meditate. such a blessing to be supported and know that we're supported. Grand rising, everyone. Grand rising. Um, Reverend Wanda's talk last week, again, thank you, Reverend Wanda, for holding down, uh, so for, I don't want to say holding down the floor, but holding down the space, but for being that loving presence and doing what you do so beautifully, so thank you so much for that. Yeah. She really is wonderful and magnificent and Reverend Sin, Cynthia, I want to always want to call her Reverend Cindy because Reverend Cynthia was the founder and um, yeah, you know, but anyway, Reverend Cynthia Ambrise, thank you for all you've done and, and everybody else that came and supported. It's important. It's important to support. Um, so Reverend Wanda's talk was pain pushes until vision pulls. And we've heard that so many times and we actually practice that. We actually practice that with everything we do. But I don't want to talk about us, Reverend Cheryl's going to do that. Um, I mean, I'm not going to not talk about us. <laughs> I think, I don't know what you're going to talk about. From the last, I, we talked, we asked what you're going to talk about. But what I want to talk about is really CSL's vision. Because I don't know that we all quite understand or on board, or, or on board because we don't necessarily understand. For those of you that attended, not CSO, but religious science, it looked a little differently. Anybody been around for more than 15 years in this teaching? Yeah? And so you kind of recognize that things have shifted. If you didn't recognize it, for those that went to South Carolina, you saw that things are different. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to read this, and I want to I ask you where it comes from, if you're familiar with it. Now, some of you are very familiar with it. For those of you that are practitioners and you're not familiar with it, please don't tell me. <laughs> um, and I have a prize for someone who knows where it comes from and what it is. I'll just say what it is. We see a world that works for everyone, where all life is honored as expressions of the divine, where people live according to spiritual truth, 
where humanity awakens to spiritual magnificence, where humanity rediscovers personal creative power, where we live as one global family, where kinship with all life prospers, where unity and connection is emphasized, where forgiveness is the norm, where spiritual guidance is valued, where we are called to conscious social action, where people have enough food, homes, and a sense of belonging, where there is peace, harmony, and justice for all, where resources are valued, cared for, and shared, where communities are meaningfully involved in service to the world, where there is a renewed emphasis on beauty, nature, creativity, art, and aesthetics. Now, can someone tell me where that's from or what that is? John. This, yeah, our global vision, our global vision, which came into play after we joined. We were Religious Science International and we were united. And now we are CSL, so we changed our nature. It's not all about us and us getting the goodies that we need. It's not, not about that. But we have moved and expanded the vision to include everyone. That's why it's called a world that works forever. Yes. That's Center for Spiritual Living's vision statement. So when you hear us speak about things that are unfamiliar and you're thinking, well, they're off script. This must be about, about them as sister girls here. And it's not, not about us. But we are following that vision from which CSL has ascribed, subscribed to. Yes? yes. Yeah. And sometimes I need to say that because sometimes I think, well, we're making up our own stuff, but we're not, we're not on task. We're not on target. There's, they have a, an agenda. The only agenda is to love more. We're expanding the circle. We're making sure that everyone is represented. And we're appreciating that rep representation. Because everybody needs to be at the table. Everybody needs and deserves to be at the table because we're all moving this mission and vision forward. We all just want to be about love. Yes? Yes. yes. All right. Now, I say that because if you had gone to South Carolina, you would have not recognized what took place. You would have not believed. And some would be, dare I say, appalled. Not probably too strong of a word, actually. I could say stronger words. But the first night, it was about, we were celebrating, well, first of all, let me say this. As long as religious science has been around, and as many conventions that are in February, guess what they have never celebrated before this time, this year? Black History Month. So we were in South Carolina, and they have a, um, and they're, the people there are the Gullah Geechee people. Anybody know what Gullah Geechee folks are? Yeah, Gullah Geechee. So we celebrated them with a choir. The place must have been ascended, I don't know, into space and beyond. The energy was above and beyond anything that I have ever felt, certainly in this organization, but probably anywhere. There was a choir. There was mention of Jesus. Oh, no. God forbid we mention Jesus. There was a mention of, uh, there were songs that had lyrics that we don't subscribe to. And of course, there was a little, ah, am I, this is in my right place? I don't know. I'm not sure that this is for me. What happened to the, the old stuff? Let's talk about some prosperity and how we can get some more money. Well, we do need to talk about that. But I, think I bring this up because if you believe in the vision that I just read, then you realize that we have to celebrate all, it all. It's all the one thing. And Jesus certainly was love. We're just talking about love. How we do it is a little differently. But we don't want to put anyone out of our hearts. And so we've got to do a little bit better, better job of accepting and knowing that it's not just what we teach, but if you teach love, I'm in. Where can I learn more about that? <coughs> If you're teaching diversity, which I'm not going to use the word as representation because it makes, diversity now has a charge on it which people are not feeling anymore. So I'm going to use representation from now on. It is the same thing. But to some it feels much different. And I've got to be compassionate to those people forward because it's a yes and, isn't it? 
Because if the people that aren't on the bus before, we're going to not be here. Because we need those folks too. And they certainly want to know the love. They just don't get the perspective. So if I can give you the perspective from a different way that you accept, it's like a spoonful of medicine makes what, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. So if I can give you a little sugar, maybe you want to take a little, it's a little easier to take. It doesn't have to be forced down your throat. I don't have, you don't have to say, open your mouth and let me pour this down. It doesn't have to feel like that. But what I do have to do, I think it's my job to not just make it all nice and, and neat and easy, but to challenge you, to be curious about what's going on and what's happening. You all need to realize what we're doing as a global organization, not just here at LVCSL. We're not just here to give out love hugs. We're not, not here to do that. But we're here to expand the vision and the mission of not only the center, but Centers for Spiritual Living in the larger way. Because if we do that, wouldn't we change the world? Yes. Don't you believe that? Yes. Unity is the same way. They do it a little, little different way. But I'm talking about CSL right now. And I think sometimes we just, this is how it's always been, and maybe it's going to go back to that. Maybe it's just Stacey and Cheryl, and if they leave or whatever, whatever, it will look differently. I promise you, no matter who you get, well, that's not necessarily true. This is the mission that we all signed up for at this day, at this time, in this moment, not just at this time and space, but in every center for spiritual living community. And so I need for, to stress that. Because I think if we express stress that a little bit more, we might see a little bit more money in the, not just here, but for CSO. They are doing such wonderful things. We planned that vision for Charleston. We worked for months. Charles, Cheryl and I were on the task force for that. The task force is just a committee that's not really a committee yet. I, as, as far as the things that we saw at Charleston, there's a panel of young folks that were all gay or trans or or a little bit of both, and we talked about pronouns and the importance of accepting people who, as they want to be, as they want to show up. And we're like, well, people are, well, I don't know, what, what, what does that mean? What is it, why do they call themselves saying? Why can't they just use their name? Because that's what they want to do. They're not harming anyone. Why can't we just learn to ask people, what would you like to be called? We don't have to understand it. We're loving people where they're at. And in turn, we're understanding, we're knowing something different. Most of us are not. <laughs> it also learned about who said, ouch, sorry. <laughs> but it's not our first day, or first year, or 10 years, or 50 years. It's an ouch. It's an ouch. I know it's an ouch, and I don't mean it that way. And we have a lot to teach, but we also have a lot to learn. It's not just one direction. Yes. The proudest moment, I would have to say, was to hear us be open to everything that came through that conference. We've done a lot of good, and we have shifted. In 15 years, I cannot believe how far we've come. And yet, unless we also try to bring the others, and here, they've got a perspective as well. We don't have to look at them. It's not us and them. Bring them along. What do you have to bring to the table? It's a potluck. What do you want to bring? I've got this. Can, what, can you, what would you like to give? Have you ever had this? Or would you be willing to try it? That's where we have to be. And it's not just, just want to say this, it mirrors the rest of the country and the world, does, not, does it not? Because if we don't come together at some point, I'm not sure where we're going, or if we're going. And if I want to be there, just to be perfectly frank, what can I, can we open our hearts and minds to listen to that other person? We all like sitting in a like-minded community, love it. I love to hear those that agree with me. Oh yeah, 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 it feels good. <laughs> those aren't the people that need this right now. It's the people that are struggling with the way that the society in their mindset, their perspective, their lens, it's the people that need to hear and feel a little love because they're feeling eliminated, excluded, and like we don't want them. Just saying. 
We've got to be open to all of it. And just bring your love. Nobody can love like Olivia loves, or Kitty, or Gina, or Kim, or Cheryl, or Franny, or Amy, or Reverend Wanda, or Juanita, or Monique. Nobody can do that like you do. We all are going to have biases, and it's okay. But what if I spoke to someone that I have a bias against and asked them, could you tell me a little bit more about what that looks and feels like? How would that might shift that, your perspective? I still might not agree. But if you're talking love, and you're, we're speaking from the same place of love, the common denominator, then why wouldn't I do that? Now, why wouldn't I do that? Not from an agenda standpoint. So, Joan, you want a book for Pivots. Do you have that already? I don't think so. Okay, so you want a book, because you knew the, the answer to the question, so the four pivots. Sean Jim Wright was our keynote speaker. Don't worry about it. Sean Jenner is our keynote speaker. <laughs> Joan's one of our board members, just so you know. Very cool. And Sean's book is brilliant because it talks about social change, but it talks about us. We can't just be fixing the mirror, as Reverend Charles always says. It doesn't work, it's the inward work. That does it beautifully with stories that are funny and fun, and he's brilliant and magnificent and cute and cute. <laughs> and Mary. And Mary. And Mary. But I mean, he also did um, an interview with Brene Brown, so you can look that up on YouTube, and I'll, I'll post that in the e-bulletin. But something just to look at. If you're struggling with the change, you know, let's get you some information so that it works for you, so it feels better, so that we can move forward. Because I'm not going to leave you all behind. Unless you want to be left behind. If you want to be left behind, you're probably not sitting in this room. Right? right? So let's do it together. It's not us and them. It can't be. It's not working. But my favorite talk was, the panel was wonderful. And if you don't know about the gender, um, and I learned a lot about that from from Yvonne and Charlie and, and that whole situation. And, and I was not where I, I'm not where I am today. I've moved forward from where I was 10 years ago or however long that was ago. And I was never against it, I just didn't understand it. It's a big difference. Can you teach me? And that's what they sat and did for two hours, two hours, something like that. It was amazing with questions and all kinds of things so that we can get a better understanding talked about orientation. Sexuality and orientation are not the same thing. How many of you know that? Not all of you realize that. These younger people are here, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I got that. Maybe yeah, we can I have a... raise my hand. <laughs> you're, you're younger than me. You're younger than me. So let me. <laughs> but perhaps we can have a conversation or a panel with those that know and we can ask questions and feel safe in the, in the ability to ask those questions and not feel judged. They have something to teach us. We can hear them and not feel like they don't want me because I'm old or whatever it is that we feel like. I'm saying we, but I don't feel that way. Yeah. But my favorite talk was learning how to handle my discomfort about anything. Anything. And you, some of you have been around here for a while. It was by this uh, minister, Reverend Dusty Ripplemeyer from North Carolina. It was amazing. She hit all the buttons. Because if you think, as much as we talk about whatever we talk about that doesn't feel comfortable, that there are not days that I want to get in the bed and put the covers over my head because it's hard, you have lost your mind. Because it is hard. And I don't want to, I'm not the person that wants to bring up stuff that's going to make you uncomfortable, but that's my job as I see it. It's also the comfort. But it's not always both at the same time. Oh, it's okay that you have a, a bias against someone and you don't want to do anything about it. No, no, we're not going to go there. <laughs> can I get you some information about that? Let me tell you my perspective. Are there things that we can do as a community to make you feel supported in you, your growth and your moving forward? Because guess what? Your kids, your, your grandkids, bless you, and everybody else that comes <laughs> beyond that are going to look at you like, what's wrong with you? Get on board. I'm an individual, I'm a human, 
and I have things to share, and it's okay whatever way I show up in, what, in whatever religion, whatever race, whatever, 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 sex or not <coughs> sex, non-binary. If you don't know what that means, look it up. But there's lots of information out there that's not going to kill you to look at. Because we're not going to go backwards, folks. We can keep just being divided. We can. Because that's all that's going to happen. We, we're going to stay in our places. This, this, is what, this is how religious science is supposed to be. We're not going back. We can take the good of what we taught, which is a lot, it's all, mostly all good, and up-level it just a little bit, a little tweak, a little tweak here and there. And we can include more people. More people means more money. More money means more programming. More programming means more attention and more love to spread to the world, yes? Yes. yes. Really quickly, and I know I'm over time probably should forever, Cheryl, and that's a whole other conversation. No, not. <laughs> the downside of the conference, which I did love. But I don't know, <laughs> 30, 40, 45 minutes off, or a little bit long. I want to finish with this. <clears throat> In honor of Black History Month, and if you don't have, anybody not have the Science of Mind textbook that wants one? I mean, Science of Mind magazine that wants one? Anybody? The new one? The new one. I'll take one. You're giving away my book. I won't be shy today. Don't be shy. Thank you. I don't know you as shy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spikes raised his hand. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Kim, I have to give you mine. Would you give that one no, to that gentleman? No, I'll give mine away. Okay. I don't you sure? Oh, yeah. I've got plenty. <laughs> I'll give her one. I'll give her one, Kale. Thank you. No, I have more than enough of <laughs> To share and spare. Books. No, I have books. no. I have one. I have one for you. I do. No, no, no. Fine. And, and mine's a little wrinkled, but you can have this one. <laughs> it's a little loved. It's it's loved up. A democracy cannot thrive where power remains unchecked and justice is reserved for a select few. Ignoring these cries and failing to respond to this mo movement is simply not an option. For peace cannot exist where justice is not served. And that's by beloved John Lewis. Mm. Ernest Holmes says this, unless we become a living embodiment of love, we have no way to say to somebody, God is love. Mm -hmm. And in, later on in, in this um, article, talks a little bit about John Lewis. In 1963, <coughs> Representative John Lewis was known as the boy from Troy. Mm. He was just 23 years old when he delivered a rousing speech and called to action during the March on Washington. Even then, he knew and told us, to those who have said, be patient and wait, we have long said that we cannot be patient. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. We are tired. We are tired of being beaten by policemen. We are tired of seeing our people locked up in jail over and over again. We do not want to go to jail, but we will go to jail. If this is the price we must pay, for love, brother and sister, and true peace. Wake up, America. Wake up. For we cannot stop, and we will not, and cannot be patient. Lewis commented, committed activism continues to challenge each of us to get into what he called good trouble. Mm -hmm. Let's all move into the good trouble that brings more love and more peace to this world yes. and this nation. And so it is. Yeah. So it is. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Stacy. <laughs> Sister Stacy. <laughs> it is still Black History Month, and I have a video to show you. Here's a little known black history science of mind fact. Meet Sarah Flowers, a prolific African-American writer of science of mind books in the 1940s. Flowers was a writer, publisher, metaphysician, frequent speaker and teacher of the science of mind. She took the major course at the Institute of Religious Science in Los Angeles in 1937 and wrote her first book, Common Sense and Its Application in Everyday Life in 1941. Other books followed, including 
the Metaphysical Thesaurus and Metaphysical Dictionary. Should I Pay for Metaphysical Treatment? And Atomic Metaphysics, The Electrical Principle of Man. In Atomic Metaphysics, she writes, in metaphysics, we must then recognize that there is a power that revolves in and around, out and beyond us at a rate equal to the atomic energy in our material beings. But it's important to note what Sarah Flowers considered her most important work, teaching practitioners metaphysical treatment for all of the problems that confront us today. You might think Science of Mind's inclusive teachings of oneness would be immune to America's history of racial segregation, but that was not the case. Dr. J. Arthur Twine founded Eastside Church of Religious Science in his home in 1932. The congregation quickly grew and became the third church to be ordained and chartered by Ernest Holmes, the founder of Religious Science. It was a thriving multiracial church, but in 1945, Third Church of Religious Science, as it was now called, was moved to the bottom of the church listings in Science of Mind magazine and noted as a colored church. Ernest Holmes found this unacceptable and went to speak to church members. He said, I have been told that too many non-Caucasians attend these lectures. True, there are Caucasians and non-Caucasians in this congregation, but this we must affirm. We are all children of one living God, one God that permeates all without exception, one intelligence that governs all, and most important, every man and woman who abides in the universe is a significant entity in the one universal consciousness. Our doors will forever be open to all, Whoever you are, be proud. You are a divine idea in the mind of God. The magazine staff immediately corrected this error and returned to listing churches alphabetically. The following year, Dr. Twine made his transition, but the church remains strong today as Third Church Center for Spiritual Living. A number of Dr. Twine's descendants became practitioners, lay leaders, and ministers, including his great-granddaughter, Reverend Stacy Hilton, who currently serves as co-spiritual director of the Las Vegas Center for Spiritual Living. Dr. J. Arthur Twine and Sarah Flowers, Black Evolutionaries in Science of Mind. know that they just just found that out that's why I want to show it <laughs> that's why it was more than three it was more than three yes yes you know I am not going to call it non-caucasians I'm gonna say people of color and um, <clears throat> that was an interesting term to me it is in the minutes of, of, of um, religious science um, books and stuff so anyway um, I have to say I have a book as well and the February issue is uh, you think that Stacy said the conference was different this was different yes. take those articles look up those people I've already ordered a couple books just from the writings learn about your history about American history about the civil rights movement. There's so much richness in these daily guides. Would you agree? Would you all agree that I've read these? Oh my God, I even text, it was Andrea, Dr. Andrea Earl. I even texted her and said, oh my goodness, I have tears. I have tears. I mean, you know, I'm always learning. Like Stacy said, it's not really, I mean, even though we love to teach classes, but we get so much out of it and so much from all of you, you don't even know. The topic, the theme for this month is divine discomfort. Okay? But our topic today is discomfort is the least of our concerns. <laughs> the very least of our concerns. People ask all the time, ask me, all the time, what is your mission? 
I tell them it's out there on the wall. <laughs> and I'm going to read it to you. We encourage people to authentically be themselves, knowing this is a safe place to land. We are accepting of all. We are love and light and expression by teaching principles and tools of the science of mind. We empower and therefore inspire others to do the same, which creates a world that works for everyone. Creates a world that works for everyone. That is our mission. Our vision is within the mission to express love, to empower lives, and to, I'm sorry, inspire hearts. These, these, this thing, when we don't know what to do about whatever it is, all we have to do is read that. And we instantly know what to do. If there's an issue and someone doesn't feel safe, we know what to do about it. If there's an issue that requires us to uh, empower someone, we know what to do. If there's an issue that requires us to love someone, we know what to do. It is in here, it's been on that wall for a long time. I, we don't have, we have no, we're not gonna change it because it tells us what to do in any case, in every case. Are you all, and you know what, when we, when you are here, when we do a prayer, when we do an offering, do you know we're not asking you for anything for us? We're asking you to support that mission solely, completely. We don't have any kids right now, but we know that we want them. We want to inspire them, empower them, and love them. So what do we do? We go volunteer at elementary schools. Thank you, Yvonne, because that is in the mission. The mission tells us what we need to do at every case. You saw that video. She didn't know. They showed that at the conference. She did not know they were going to show it, and she spoke after that. She came out, she being Reverend Stacy, my sister, she came out from behind that stage, and she said, and I'm like, ooh, who's that? She said, this is not my great-grandfather's church. This is 2024, people. One, 101, 102, one, we're in 104. We're, all of us are in prep training. I know you didn't know that. But I'm here to tell you, discomfort is the least of our concern. The least of our concern. This church is not my great grandfather's church. Hmm. Hmm. You know, JFK said, I know you guys don't, you know, we have this thing about politics, but I'm going to tell you what he said anyway. <laughs> In a democracy, every citizen, regardless of his interest in politics, holds office. Every citizen. Every one of us is in a position of responsibility. And in the final analysis, the kind of government we get depends on how we fulfill those responsibilities. Yes. Ernest Holmes says, within us is an unborn possibility of limitless experience. Ours is the privilege of giving birth to it. Resilience is not just about bouncing back from adversity or dealing and being uncomfortable. I think Reverend Wanda talked about that last week. Right? It involves the ability to adapt and cope effectively with challenges. How often is it, how often it seems easier to resist the call to becoming, to that greater becoming? It's easy to stay in bed, put the covers over your head, right? And not be, not feel that discomfort. We, we got in, we got in home at 11 o'clock. Do you think we could, could have called somebody and said, hey, please go speak? <laughs> please. 
I texted Juanita this morning. <laughs> oh, how often does it seem easier to risk the call of a great becoming, remaining within the dark cocoon or under those sheets of a self that has settled for good enough? I choose not to remain at that level. That's why I'm here. You think you're going to get rid of us? Do you think... <laughs> This is, Marianne Williamson said this in her Year of Miracles, which we have in the bookstore. And I'm not trying to sell you a book. But she, she says, I choose not to remain good today, but rather to answer the call to greatness. You know, I know, you know, we all thought, and so did America, she had very little chance of getting on any ticket. But she, this is her, she answered the call. She stayed true to her mission. Whatever it is, she did whatever. <laughs> and I cannot, I know it was uncomfortable. I see her face. On, we were on calls with her and her team. Tears. This was not comfortable for her. Even though I love listening to smart people talk. So... <laughs> You all, someone said once um, to one of our board members, why, am I, why would I give to a failing ship? Sinking ship, sorry. And I am here to say, if you think it's sinking, then you're on the wrong boat. Because you're not going to get rid of us. Because we know what our mission is, we know what we're here to do. We're here to create a world that works for all. We're here to... Let every moment and every person, every child even, know that they are loved and loved. Every single I don't, grocery store, Starbucks, doesn't matter where you are, show up as that. I was talking a Super Bowl weekend, how I never noticed the back of the helmets, they say, be love. That's all I'm asking you to do is be love and support this mission. And support each other. Thank you. <laughs> the fire's not limits to one. To one. <laughs> video before I always love seeing it. You're so smart to be born into the right family. <laughs> you guys sing along, some of you might know this word, this song. It's a pretty upbeat song, so if you guys are able to and would like to stand up and dance, feel free to do this. So. Yes. Like a white eye Cause we should, we should shine that 
you for giving me like a vision. Ah, 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 I was expected. But who am I to tell me where it's supposed to go? the conference and you have to know this there were over 12 speakers there and our Reverend Stacy was absolutely yes. the best of all no question about it she got a standing ovation for just about everybody there not all those speakers got that so it was fabulous 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 okay the announcements are Jamie Jetty's life reflection cafe meets tomorrow here at the center at 10 a.m. on Mondays and see the happenings table for the flyer Business owners who are interested in Tithe to Program, Tithe 10 Program, please see announcement on the happenings table. Our very own wonderful Ariel Limo 
is hosting a spiritual living circle on the third Saturday of each month. They will meet virtually on Zoom from 1 until 3. And the first meeting is, well, the first meeting was held yesterday, apparently. Well, that, that can't be true. Last, last, last Saturday. Saturday. Last Saturday. So the cost is free. And the next meeting is on the 16th of March. And the group is discussing the Science of Mind magazine articles. And when you sign up, you get a six-month free online digital subscription. So check that out. Our practitioner's midweek inspiration and prayer will be on the 6th of March on Wednesday from 4 o'clock until 6. No, that's not right. <laughs> from 6 until 6.45. Yeah, that's not right. That's not right? 6 until 6.45? Yeah, that's right. I was going to say, I thought that was right. The first and third. The, the 6th of March would be the first. Yes. But 6th of March. <laughs> from 6 until 6.40, I love this, 6 to 6.45, I'm on there every chance I get, I don't know why I'm going whoop whoop, it must be that I'm still jet lagged, three hours, yeah, Imagine. that must have something to do with it, South Carolina, so anyway, that's, and it's wonderful, and, and, and we always, the practitioner, one of our practitioners leads it from that 6 to 6.45, but everybody's invited, so hop on Zoom with us, because it's really wonderful, the Healing Words Book Club is this Wednesday from 4 o'clock till 6 p.m. and studying the book American Sirens by Kevin Hazard. And this is that incredible story of the black men who became America's first paramedics. Fascinating story. Um, the, there's going to be a workshop starting here this, this coming Saturday and our very own Reverend Sandy is going to come up and talk about it because she's leading this wonderful workshop. Thank you, Thank you, Kitty. Oh, I'm still on a high from coming back from conference. Every speech, the best one I've ever been to. I did. There wasn't a speech I didn't like. Well, enough of that. <laughs> I'm really excited about a workshop that I'm doing. It will be March the second through the last Saturday in March, and it's uh, from one until three, and it's letting me share something that I am passionate about: writing. And whether you are just a beginner, whether you dislike writing, whether you like writing, you know, if you were a creative, creative writing major in college, there's so much in there to talk about and to share. Because we're going to be discovering a way that we can totally express ourselves without anything, without having any fear of sharing what we're sharing. The end goal of this workshop is that people that are in the class are going to be putting something that they have written into an anthology. When we publish this, it will be just published by Las Vegas CSL and all the profits of selling it will go to the center. And I just think that you would really enjoy it Sign up on the table if you haven't already, especially with your email, because there are a few things I'm going to email to you before the class. Thank you. I hope to see you there. Bye. Next month on Saturday, March 23rd, at 11 a.m., we are going to have our annual meeting, and all members, are, of course, are invited to attend in person, and if you would like to attend virtually on Zoom, you can certainly do that as well. Um, this is our, our annual meeting. I think I said that, okay. So, uh, and I think that's it. Or if you're not a member, is it too late to join? No. So, if you're not, if you're not signed up as a member, join so you can come to that, because it's really interesting. And you learn about what we did all last year and all the fun stuff that we've got to look forward to. Our love supply pantry is freezer full, is open for us to let anyone know that's food insecure to please come and take advantage of that. And also, if you if you when you're shopping, if you can just pick up a few, you know, non-perishable items to add to that, that would really be wonderful. And of course, for prayer support, just send your prayer request to prayer at lasvegascsl.org or text 702-524-7096. And of course, our bookstore is open today with books and lots of goodies and our, and our books against the, in the, um, uh, the um, 
It's a blonde bag. Over there. I really am jet lagged, you guys. I'm not kidding. I'm not usually like this. I'm like, bluh, bluh, bluh. <laughs> or 60% off. Okay, and I think, oh yes, follow us on Insta Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and then visit our website. And everybody, let's have a fabulous week. <laughs> I'd like to ask our minister of prayer team to please surround the room. Do not leave here with a heavy heart. They are here to pray with, for, or just have a conversation. All right. I'm going to ask Reverend Stacy to give us a closing prayer. Okay, so if it's comfortable for you, please close or lower your eyes and just take a deep breath in. And exhale. And feel in that energy all the love that each one has brought to this room. Knowing that wherever you are in, in this thing called CSL, that you are needed, you are wanted, you are loved, you are appreciated. I'm so beyond grateful for this teaching that taught me that long ago. I'm so grateful to be able to continue to teach that from my very best and highest self. Grateful to know that as each of us bring our own version of love to the circle that we see the circle expand and expand and expand so that one day it looks differently we feel that there's no longer separation we feel that yeah I might not like them but I love them we feel that everyone as a place, a voice, and is represented. That's it. It's easy. And so let's take that in the world today and every day this week, next week, and the weeks after that. Thank you, community. Thank you, CSL. And thank you, first and foremost, to the divine. And say with me, and so, so it is. is. All right. We have another video. Oh, we do. Okay. We're not singing the peace song, but please stand. Yes. Please stand. For those, for those of you that don't know, since this is Black History Month, I know we interrupted this before. Um, so we're going to sing Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is the Black National Anthem. And uh, that, it, that was a good day to do it. It's the last day, su Sunday of the month. I also want to, before we do that, the best part of sitting in the, um, the last day of the convention was watching Taya. Taya Stefano is one of our international teen leaders give a powerful message about love. We're doing great things. We got one team. And she did, she's doing it. It just takes one of us to change the world. So we got more than one. So thank Absolutely. you, Joan, for being that model and bringing all the love. Appreciate that. So, anyway, and I got this love bracelet from someone. It's a whole other story. Yeah, we won't even go there. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what that story is. Not, not a good story. So we'll, I we'll show it on it. Sunday. So we'll show it. But please, if you don't know the words, the words are coming up. And just kind of sway or whatever you want to do. Thank you. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony Of liberty Let our rejoice
Let's march on till victory is won. Let us march on till victory is won. Let us march on till victory right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. I know this in my mind. I know this in my mind. I feel it throughout my entire body. I feel it throughout my entire body. And so it is. And so it is. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you to Green Week. Now time. I feel happy.